Welcome you all to the future of Triple E channel. I am Siddhartan. We are discussing about the speed control methods of three phase induction motor. In the previous video, we have seen voltage bar frequency that is V by F control method using rectifier and inverter setup. In that, if the inverter input is voltage, then it's called voltage source inverter. In this video, let's see the circuit diagram of voltage source inverter fed induction motor drive using TWM control. Actually, in V by F control method, both magnitude and frequency of line voltage has to control based on the desired rotor speed of three phase induction motor. Surprisingly, using sinusoidal PWM control, it is possible to control both magnitude and as well as frequency of line voltages. So, let's see how magnitude and frequency control is done using PWM operation. First, let's consider three phase voltage source inverter consisting of six IGBT switches as shown here, which will be connected to three phase induction motor. For simplicity, I have not shown the induction motor here. Inverter can also be made up of six thyristor switches. But keep in mind that if you are using thyristor as switches, then you need to have a separate commutation circuit to turn off the thyristors. That is to reverse bias the thyristors. Here, the input DC voltage is center tapped as shown. VA0, VB0 and VC0 in the inverter are called pole voltages. It is the potential difference between the center point of two switches in one leg and ground. You can directly control these pole voltages by controlling the gate voltages of IGBT switches. For example, when the first leg upper transistor S1 turns on, by giving the gate voltage, then VA0 is equal to plus VB2. When the first leg lower transistor S2 turns on, by giving the gate voltage, then VA0 is equal to minus VB2. Similarly for the second leg and third leg transistors. But in VBF control, what we need to control is the magnitude and frequency of line voltages. That is VAB, VBC and VCA. We can write VAB as VA0 minus VB0. VBC as VB0 minus VC0 and VCA as VC0 minus VA0. And we need to keep in mind that three line voltages should have 120 degree phase shift. So VBC will have 120 degree phase shift with respect to VAB and VCA should have 120 degree phase shift with respect to VBC or in other words it should have 240 degree phase shift with respect to VAB. From these equations we can say that if we control the pole voltages by controlling the gate voltages of IGBT switches, then it is possible to control the magnitude and frequency of line voltages. So the question in our mind should be how the controlled gate voltages can be generated using PWM method. We can consider the generation of controlled gate voltage as a three step process. First step is to create three sinusoidal signals called modulating signals with 120 degree phase shift. Second step is to create one triangular signal called carrier signal. Each sinusoidal signal and triangular signal will be compared using three comparators in the third step. And finally, output of the comparators will be generating the gate voltages for the upper and lower switches of each leg in the inverter as shown here. It is important to note that gate voltages to the lower switches that is S2, S4 and S6 are given through the NOT gate. So both transistors in the same leg will not turn on at the same time. This is to avoid short circuit in the inverter at any given instant of time. Here I have shown the overall power circuit with 6 switches and PWM control circuit which will generate the gate voltages for all the 6 switches. To understand the operation, let's analyze how gate voltages are generated for single sinusoidal signal and triangular signal. As you can see, the sinusoidal signals will be given to the positive of the comparators and triangular signal will be given to the negative of the comparators. So, if sinusoidal signals are greater than triangular signal, then PWM control circuit will generate positive gate voltages. And if triangular signal is greater than sinusoidal signals, then PWM control circuit will generate negative gate voltages. 
positive gate voltages when sinusoidal signal 1 is greater than triangular signal will turn on the upper transistor S1 and negative gate voltages when triangular signal is greater than sinusoidal signal 1 will turn on the lower transistor S2. So pole voltages VA0 will be equal to plus V by 2 when S1 turns on and minus V by 2 when S2 turns on. Again I need to remind you that what we need to control is the magnitude and frequency of line voltages VAB, VBC and VCA. So let's analyze for single line voltage VAB in detail which is equal to VA0 minus VB0. To find VA0 and VB0 let's take sinusoidal signal 1 with 0 degree phase shift sinusoidal signal 2 with 120 degree phase shift and triangular signal. As we seen before, when sinusoidal signal 1 is greater than triangular signal, positive gate voltages will be generated and VA0 will be equal to plus VB2. When triangular signal is greater than sinusoidal signal 1, negative gate voltages will be generated and VA0 will be equal to minus VB2. Similarly, when sinusoidal signal 2 is greater than triangular signal, Positive gate voltages will be generated and VB0 is equal to plus VB2. When triangular signal is greater than sinusoidal signal 2, negative gate voltages will be generated and VB0 is equal to minus VB2. The line voltage VAB is equal to VA0 minus VB0. So, line voltage VAB will have plus V and minus V pulses in each half cycle as shown here. As you can see that there are three pulses in each half cycle with different width and usually central pulse will be wider. Fourier analysis will reveal that it will have less harmonic content than a single pulse per half cycle. You can clearly see that the frequency of line voltage VAB is equal to the frequency of sinusoidal signals. So if we need to increase or decrease the frequency of line voltage, then it is possible by increasing or decreasing the frequency of sinusoidal signals. Carrier ratio is the terminology used in literature which is equal to the ratio of frequency of the triangular signal to the frequency of the sinusoidal signals. Carrier ratio determines the number of pulses in each half cycle. You can also identify that the magnitude of line voltage VAB and hence the RMS value can be increased or decreased by increasing or decreasing the pulse width of line voltage, which can be increased or decreased by increasing or decreasing the amplitude of sinusoidal signals. Modulation index is the terminology used in literatures which is equal to the ratio of amplitude of sinusoidal signal to the amplitude of triangular signal. I think now you understand how magnitude and frequency of line voltage can be varied by varying the amplitude and frequency of sinusoidal signals called modulating signals using PWM control circuit. Ok in the next video we will see the 6 step switching in voltage source inverter. You can download this PPT and PDF in the link given in the description. So please subscribe to my channel, have a smile and have a good day.